AI is in the news everywhere, every day. We're hearing about ChatGPT, OpenAI, all these innovations that maybe they take everyone's jobs, maybe they will put you out of business, or maybe it'll make you work so much faster that you can grow a company a lot easier. I think there's a lot of myths and misconceptions around AI right now. So that's why in this video, I'm gonna talk through five things I think every SaaS founder should know about artificial intelligence. I'm Rob Walling. I'm a serial entrepreneur with multiple exits. I've written four books on building startups and I've invested in almost 150 companies. The first thing I want you to think about with regards to AI is how it might be applied within your SaaS application as a feature or a way to level up your customers and make them more productive. And in order to do that, I've come up with a framework of sorts, maybe a taxonomy you might call it, of things that AI does well. And I actually asked ChatGPT and Google, trying to figure out if there is an existing taxonomy or classification of these components that AI does really well, and I couldn't find one, so I came up with my own. And there are four components to it, four things that I think AI does well, and with each of these, you'll be wanting to ask yourself, does my SaaS app do that or need to do that? And can I use AI to do it? So the first is generative AI. So this includes AI that generates text from nothing. It generates images from its corpus. It can take a blog post and turn it into a YouTube outline. It's taking nothing and, you know, it's a language learning model. So obviously there's something underneath, but it's you giving it a prompt and it producing a result. So if you have a social media posting tool or you have a tool that helps people place Google AdWords or Facebook ads, you know that they need to come up with text for the headline and text for the body of the ad and maybe an image for if it's a Facebook or an Instagram ad. So generative AI could be used in one of those cases. The second category of AI is categorization. If you gave ChatGPT a list of a thousand different websites, could it classify them as being e-commerce or content or SaaS or something else? It could. You can train these models pretty easily with prompts to be able to figure out which categories that things fit into. And so if you have a place in your app where someone might need to do manual work to categorize things, such as, for example, support emails, where you might want to categorize them into pricing tier or categorize them by topic. This is something that you could think about integrating. The third category of AI is summarization. So this is taking a YouTube video and turning it into a two paragraph summary, turning this YouTube video into a tweet thread, taking a podcast episode and writing show notes for it that are much shorter than the transcript. I realize that summarization is really generative and that it's taking a source and turning it into something else. But for the exercise of thinking through how this can apply to your SaaS application, I think it's pretty important to separate generative from summarization and realize that if folks need to do something like this in your app, it's probably time to think about integrating. And the fourth thing that AI does well is prediction. So you can imagine if you have a financial application, something that has a lot of numbers in it, frankly, and any kind of graph that has a trend, AI can take that and trend it out, not just in a linear fashion, but it would take seasonality into account. It could take a lot of things into account, frankly. So this might be a narrower use case. And if you're not in financial or, you know, let's say you're a metrics dashboard, anything like that, I think predictive AI could be a compelling feature for you to potentially integrate. So again, those are the four categories. And if I were a SaaS founder today, and what I'm telling my tiny seed companies is to think about whether any or all of these use cases can help your customers get there faster within your app. So that was the first point of five things you should know about AI. The second one is that unless you build something novel that is non-obvious and difficult to build, AI is not a differentiator. Realizing that if you ask OpenAI or you hit their API and you create something that a year ago would have been unimaginable, today it's really easy. If it takes you a couple days to build that, anyone could build it in a couple days. That's the thing of AI is it's not a differentiator, but it is something of an accelerant, right? Everyone can use this. And this reminds me when the Rails web development framework came out for Ruby several years ago. And when we first saw it, we were like, well, now you can build Twitter in 20 minutes. You know, there's this great demo of doing it. But what we realized is that it's not a differentiator because anyone who knows Ruby can use Rails. And so it became an accelerant where we can now build more things faster 
faster and developers become more efficient, but everyone can use it. And so it is not a differentiator. In fact, the differentiation is if you don't use it, you will slowly fall behind. So if you don't use a web development framework today, like a Rails or a Django or a Laravel, and you're coding in those languages, you will get a lot less done in the same amount of time. The last point on this is the obvious ideas that will take you a week to build, like, hey, take this YouTube video and turn it into XYZ. They are already or they will soon be commodities because these things are not that hard to build. And so there is no moat, right? You, need, you still need a moat today like you needed a moat six months ago. And these moats will be the same. AI is just another thing to sprinkle into your application. The third thing to know about AI is that the big ideas, the huge horizontal plays like OpenAI and like Google's Bard, they're gonna be dominated by the existing incumbents, the Googles, the Microsofts, maybe the Facebooks, maybe IBM, and obviously OpenAI, which kind of cracked this whole thing wide open. But there is so much money flowing into those companies, into these efforts, that we as bootstrapped or mostly bootstrapped founders, we don't stand a chance in those spaces. So don't think about building your own models because the models of Dolly and of ChatGPT are moving so quickly that by the time you get yours trained, they're two, three versions past you. And it's so expensive and time consuming to build them that we now have to think about building on top of their models rather than thinking that we as mostly bootstrap founders can possibly compete in horizontal AI. The fourth thing you should know about AI is that it is an incredible accelerant within your company. Consider using it internally. And in fact, I think every SaaS company can use AI internally, whether it's to repurpose content, like I've talked about a YouTube video into a tweet thread or a blog post into a tweet thread or a podcast into a, you know, a transcript or a podcast into show notes or ask ChatGPT to write cold emails for you based on a persona, or it can even help outline YouTube videos based on a title. You know, whatever else it can do to help you be more productive can potentially help you get there faster and grow faster. And I'm not talking about ways to implement AI as a feature in your product, I'm talking about a way to make your internal operations more efficient and more effective. I think of it a little bit like in 2008, when suddenly I was able to outsource work to a $5 an hour virtual assistant in the Philippines. And that changed the game for my little software company at that point. AI can do something similar for you. Not every SaaS app needs AI inside. I think most do, and I think most can use AI, but I do believe that every SaaS company in its own operations can and should be using AI, namely ChatGPT these days, but there are also many tools that utilize OpenAI like Automata or Alright that you can be using in your day-to-day -day operations. And the fifth thing you should be thinking about in terms of AI is that some businesses, some SaaS companies are effectively ticking time bombs because AI is going to make your business obsolete or just really unnecessary, very inexpensive, very easy to accomplish. Because if you have a team of five or 10 analysts that are analyzing data and summarizing things and doing operations that AI can now do for almost free in the snap of a finger, the value of what you do is going to drop dramatically. So something you could charge $1,000 a month for today might be worth 20 minutes of someone's time next month. And that can really change the economics of your business. And so I think a big thing to ask yourself is whether AI today can mostly replace what your product does and whether you need to integrate AI to make yourself more efficient or to stay ahead of this curve so that you don't wake up one day in a year or two and realize I don't really have a business anymore because people can accomplish what I'm charging them a lot of money to do. They can accomplish this in a few minutes using ChatGPT. In a minute, I'm gonna tell you the other AI video that you should watch immediately after this one. But before I do that, I wanna let you know that MicroConf Europe tickets are on sale. You know, this is the MicroConf YouTube channel and we run in-person events. And our flagship Europe event is in Lisbon in October of 2023. If you wanna get in a room where you can chat with other founders who are not only chatting about how AI will affect their business, but all the other SaaS stuff of building, launching, and growing, head to microconf.com 
Europe.com slash Europe and see if you can still grab a ticket. It's October 1st through the 3rd of 2023. Tickets are going fast and we do expect it to sell out. Speakers include Michelle Hansen of Geocodio, Dr. Sherry Walling, Stephen Inala Craven of Stridist. I'll be doing a talk. I hope to see you in Lisbon in October. So we know that AI has huge potential, but also has major pitfalls. And you should check out this other video on our channel about how ChatGPT blew up a SaaS app in the worst way. Thanks for watching.